Okay, uh, today we'll talk about uh, the single phase drives. In the start, the first lecture will be on the single phase drives. Then after that, we'll move to the DC to DC converters drives. So uh, for the single phase drives, uh, from the name, you'll find that we will be able to uh, use uh, a single phase converter to control the DC motor. So when the armature is uh, when the armature circuit is connected to the output of the single uh, phase controlled rectifier, the armature voltage then can be controlled by changing the firing angle of that, uh, of that particular uh, rectifier. So let's say, for example, here we have a DC motor. Okay, here we have the armature resistance and uh, inductance. So what we are going to do is to have a controlled rectifier with a specific firing angle alpha this firing angle will allow us to change the uh, the average of the output voltage because by changing the firing angle the average will be changing okay and this will be connected to the armature circuit so the output of the rectifier will be connected to the input of the armature circuit okay and here we have of course single phase ac power supply Similarly, I'll, I'll suppose that we have another circuit similar to this for the field uh, circuit. Okay, so here we have another field circuit with a control rectifier, and also here we have single phase AC power supply. Now here we have IF, and here we have IA. So this uh, is what we call. We can say that this is a basic circuit arrangement of a single phase. Uh, DC drive. This armature current, the armature current here, can be discontinuous. Why? Because we have firing angle. If we have firing angle, we know that the voltage can be something like, like this, right? It's not something continuous. It can be discontinuous. And because this is discontinuous, what we can do actually to uh, to solve this problem, we can add additional filter here, additional inductor. We call this LM, for example, and this additional uh, inductor uh, make smoothing for the armature current, and usually is connected in series with the armature circuit. This is to make sure that the armature current is continuous. Now this is the general arrangement for a single phase uh, drive. Now, if you remember last time, we said we have four quadrants. We have we speeding, motoring, we have braking, and we said we can either change. Uh, disconnect or change the direction of uh, the terminals either for the uh, armature circuit or for the field circuit. What we're going to do actually here in order to change from one quadrant to another, we can use uh, contactors and change the direction of the current in each circuit or in one of the circuits to operate at one uh, uh, specific quadrant. Let's have a look here, for example. So here, for example, if you want to change the armature uh, terminals, the armature circuit terminal, what you're going to do, so this is the motor. Now, by this arrangement, we can just change the switch direction from here to here. So this is switch one, switch two. The field circuit, it can be the sim similar thing, or it can be fixed. It's up to you. Once you change one direction, one, one terminal, no need to change the other one. The current is flowing in this direction. Right? By this arrangement, the current will be flowing in this direction. Okay, so IA can be positive. Okay? But in this case, if the terminal is here, it's connected at this point, so you'll find that the current will be in the opposite direction, right? It will become here and move back here. So the current inside the motor can be either this direction or this direction same thing can be uh, arranged for the field circuit now let's focus more on this uh, drive on this control rectifier this control rectifier can be either full uh, converter drive which, which means you'll be able to uh, control uh, uh, the wave or the full waveform either in the positive or a negative side or semi semi converter similar to what we studied before in just in the positive side. Now, each one of these converter has some advantages and disadvantages. If you want to use semi-converter, that's fine. If you want to use full converter, that's fine. But the full converter, because you, you are operating in the negative side, 
you'll find that you'll be able to change the value of the current very fast, which is important at some time. Let's have a look at uh, the semiconverter drive, which appears here. Now, before going to this, I want to make some revision for what we what we have studied before. If we have a sine wave like this, and we have a rectified sine wave, only this portion, okay, with alpha. So the average of this we obtained it before, which is V out, is equal to how much? V maximum over pi times one plus cosine alpha. Now we said if this voltage comes from the positive to the negative, so in this case for the, for the case of the semiconverter, this one for the full converter, so this is V maximum over pi times cosine alpha. We obtained this before. We derived, we already derived the equations. We already derived the average. Now we will use these values in today's lecture. Now for this semiconverter, let's say that we have VA. This is the input VS. Okay. We have VA. This is the field circuit and this is the armature circuit. Each one of these has a, a controlled rectifier with diode on the output. This diode makes sure that the output is always positive, okay, which means we have a semiconverter uh, circuit. The voltage VA, the armature voltage, is equal to how much? It will be something like this. This is alpha, and this is pi, and then on the next cycle, it will be also something like this. Because it's a full converter, right? F full wave rectifier, right? So this is pi plus alpha and so on and so forth, right? So this is the VA. VA is equal to how much? And in, in this case, the average is equal to V maximum over pi times one plus cosine alpha, right? The field circuit, all the same thing. Now, because the output is a motor, a highly inductive load, right? So this can be replaced by what? By a current source. We can say that this is a constant IA, right? So IA is constant. Now, if you look at the input, the input current, You'll find that here, this is alpha, pi. So the input IS should be either positive or negative. But when the diode is conducting here, right, you'll find that there's some portion comes to the diode, right? So for example, here, the thyristor is not conducting, okay? Uh, so the current on the diode will be positive like this, IA. This will be IA. The current on the input will be zero, but here, when the when the thyristor is conducting, so we'll find that the current IA, the current on the input is equal to IA. And here, zero, this is minus IA, zero, IA, and so on and so forth. Zero amperes here. Here, the diode will be either IA or zero. Now we said VA, the voltage, is responsible for what? Or corresponds to what? The speed. Okay, so the speed is positive, voltage here, VA is positive, no problem. IA also is positive, so the torque is positive, so we are on the first quad, so it's motoring. So in this case, VA is positive, IA is positive, and then we are operating uh, in the first quadrant. For the rectifier circuit, the only trick here is, or the only new thing is, we added a diode here. To make sure that the output voltage is positive all the time otherwise we know the rectifier uh, controlled rectifier uh, full wave rectifier here no problems this is well, well known for us just we need to link it with the voltage value here the average let's move to single phase full converter drives now you find that here we removed the diode okay there is no diode here again we'll use the same uh, rectifier for both field circuit and the armature circuit and again the input voltage can be a sine wave like this the output voltage because this is a this is a control rectifier and the output is inductive load so the current here is continuous all the time so ia is positive all the time so what do we expect here we expect that if we have alpha here at the zero crossing here Thyristor will keep conducting, right? Thyristor T1 and T2 here, T1, T2 keeps conducting, right? Until T3, T4 take over, right? Until next alpha comes, which is on the negative side, 
once the next alpha comes you'll find that next thyristors will take over okay and then we'll keep conducting but from here to here thyristor one and two will keep conducting and the output will be something like this because the output is continuous current ia okay is not a resistive load if a resistive load then yes there is no value here it will be zero but because we have inductive load so no problems this will be uh, will keep conducting thyristor one and two will keep conducting so, uh, at this point when thyristor so here one and two conducting here when thyristor three and four conduct right what happens you'll find that uh, the voltage will be positive and the output will be something like this again when thyristor one and two conduct then the output will be like this and so on and so forth now the average for va is equal to how much also we obtain this one so this will be 2v maximum over pi times cosine alpha now what we need to look at is uh, the input current at this point so the input current is equal to how much now now from here to here when thyristor 1 thyristor 2 are conducting you'll find that the input current is equal to the ia right when thyristor 1 thyristor 2 are conducting so the input current is equal to ia this portion and when thyristor 3 and thyristor 4 are conducting so you'll find that this portion here will be on the negative side so this will be minus ia and here's the same thing minus ia now the question again we need to watch two values voltage and current va and ia va will be how much will be positive and negative and ia is always positive so the torque is positive all the time but the speed can be either positive or negative so here va va can be either positive or negative and ia is always positive so here uh, this converter works in the first so we have the freedom now can can work at first and the fourth quadrant now if we reverse the field or the armature this allows operation on the second and the third quadrant if we change these terminals this or this right so this can be working on the th on the second or the third quadrant uh, here we have a simple question a simple example uh, okay so the example says uh, we have a single phase semiconverter similar to the first uh, converter we studied controls the speed of a separately excited motor the field current is set to the maximum possible value so here it's very important the field current is set to the maximum possible value so we need to watch which what is the maximum possible value or when is uh, when the maximum possible value um, occurs uh, the ac supply voltage is 208 and 50 hertz the armature resistance is 0.25 ohms uh, the field resistance is 147 ohms and the motor voltage constant is 0.7032 volt ampere radian per second volt per ampere radian per second the load torque is 45 newton meter at 1000 rpm and uh, the motor is a highly inductive the feed current is continuous and ripple free and the viscous friction and no load losses are negligible so here the friction no no need to care about the friction just we need to watch the uh, torque TLTD uh, what we need to find is the field current okay and the firing angle of the converter in the armature circuit and the input power factor of the armature circuit converter now let's go and solve the first requirement the field current IF let's summarize first the uh, what we have now here we have the input voltage VS is how much 208 volt this is usually the RMS voltage so the maximum voltage is equal to how much 208 times the root square of 2 RA is equal to how much 0.25 ohms and RF 147 ohms we said no fraction so TD is equal to TL and this is equal to 45 Newton meter and this is operating at Omega 1000 rpm and finally kv is equal to how much uh, 0.7032 we need to find the field current and from the question said the field current is set to the maximum possible value 
so the maximum possible value is at how much is at alpha equals to zero because it's cosine alpha and cosine alpha should be how much the maximum which should be one right so the field current is equal to how much two v maximum over pi and this will be how much 187.27 volt if similarly we can find it here which is vf over rf which is given so this will be how much 187.27 over 147 and this will be how much it will be 1.27 amperes okay how to find the firing angle we know that va is equal to how much uh, we can find the alpha from this equation so we need to find va v maximum to find the armature voltage if you look at the uh, armature voltage is equal to how much is equal to ia times ra plus b back emf applied on the motor okay plus any voltage on the circuit right ia is equal to how much the developed torque over kvif because the developed torque is equal to how much kvif times ia and this is given all these values are given so this will be 45 over 0.7 something times 1.27 so from here we can say that ia is equal to how much 50 point two three amperes what else we need to find the back emf so eg is equal to kv by definition from last lecture omega times if so this will be how much 0.7032 times omega which is 1000 pi over 30 times 1.27 now remember the rpm 1000 rpm need to be converted to radian per second omega and we said last time just multiply by pi over 30 and this will be how much 93.82 volt va now is equal to how much i a r a plus e g and all these values this uh, we already obtained it this is given so uh, this will be how much it will be if you calculate it will be 106.38 volt now all these values here we need to substitute here and find the value of alpha so alpha is equal to how much cosine alpha is equal to va times pi over v maximum minus one minus one and from this we can say that alpha is equal to how much 82.2 degrees so the last requirement c we need to find the power factor now if you look at the power factor here we have two values there is the power the r uh, which is obtained on the input the rms uh, voltage the rms uh, current and also there is power which is applied on the uh, armature circuit now the power which is applied on the armature circuit is equal to how much va times ia but now we need to look at the rms values i now we know the rms uh, voltage we need to find the rms current for the rms current if you remember the input is equal to how much now this is alpha and this is pi and here we have pi plus alpha and so on and so forth right so we need to find the rms value for this square wave it's not exactly square wave but we need to find the, the rms for this value so rms the root square the root means square of this value so this will be how much i a squared integration from alpha a to pi if we make square for this to be positive so it's enough to make only for this one no problems and we multiply by 2 over 2 pi now i a is constant can be out 2 will go with 2 and uh, the integration for one will be theta because here d theta so here you'll find that we have i a squared over pi times theta from alpha a to pi calculate this value you'll find that 37.025 amperes the, now the input va rating is how much is equal to r miss times i r miss right which is 208 times the current which is 37.025 okay how much the vi this 7702.24 now the power factor then is equal to how much the 5000 over the 7000 and then uh, this will be how much the power factor 0.694 lagging why because we have inductive load right 